Hello, and welcome to a talk about some of the classic world of horror, sci-fi, television and stuff. Um, I figured that if I was just going to say stuff, then it would be a bit kind of dull. And now the first one I'm going to talk about is All Things Invisible, because I'm a massive fan of the character The Invisible Man. Uh, now this here, this version, uh, this stars the mighty David McCullum, and I apologise for any noises or growling or scratching or anything like that that might have occurred, uh, because we've got cats and we've got a dog, so uh, that is that is them there. The uh, the barking, incessant growling you hear, that'll obviously be the cats, because uh, they do impersonations. Uh, now, this one, uh, The Invisible Man, uh, came out uh, in the 1970s, and uh, stars um, David McCullum, as I said, and it's a four-disc set. I was extremely pleased to get this one. Let's zoom the camera in a bit more. There we go. That's it. We can kind of see it now. Uh, I was extremely pleased to get this one because it managed to, um, to be really a flashback to the time when um, TV was, in my personal opinion, much better. Uh, it's... This tells the tale of David McCullum and this cult role, TV classic, The Man from Uncle, um, and he went on to star in this. Daniel Weston is his name, his employer, and the name of the uh, corporation works on experiments for molecular disintegration with his wife, Kate, uh, played by the delightful Melinda Fee. Um, when he discovers that uh, this, this stuff can uh, turn animals invisible, uh, he steps into the beam and basically vanishes. Uh, it turns out now that he can, with the aid of this special plastic skin, he can still become an agent and work and go and disappear. Now, um, unlike the sequel, uh, The Gemini Man, which stars, um, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, this one, The uh, the Invisible Man, seemed to me at the time to be um, a kind of more watchable. Uh, obviously none of the, the plots were overly fantastic because a lot like the uh, the Spider-Man TV series at the same time, they didn't. They kind of shied away a little bit from having uh, super villains and stuff like that. So it's carried a lot on McCombs' personality, and it works tremendously well. McCollum in this is absolutely brilliant. It's a four-disc set, and it's come on from Acorn Entertainment. So that's that one. And this one here. Now this is Le Novel Homme Invisible. This is also known as the Gemini Man, which was the follow-on from uh, The Invisible Man. This time he was replaced by Alias Smith & Jones' is Ben Murphy. This is 12 episodes. And uh, along from the plastic skin, they'd done away with all that. And Ben Murphy had a watch, which, strangely enough, during that time, uh, the announcer would always give a warning. They used to do continuity announcers. And at the end of every episode, they never said, don't mess around with your watch. And yet Captain Scarlet, who was indestructible, um, they always told you, don't practice the things Captain Scarlet does because he's indestructible, even though like he was a puppet and Ben Murphy was, to the best of my knowledge, a human being. Now, he had only 15 minutes to stay invisible, otherwise he would be invisible forever. Um, great stuff, good fun. And uh, Tara picked me this one up. Loads of behind-the-scenes stuff on this one, loads of features, and it's a great show. Again, a very likeable personality. Uh, ben Murphy plays the character really, really well. Moving on, we go back in time. Uh, to The Invisible Man, which uh, the BBC produced. Now, this is H.G. Wells' classic psychological thriller, The Invisible Man. And, um, again, this is great stuff. This is stars Pip Donaghy and Michael Sheard as uh, The Invisible Man, as Griffin. And this really tells a tale of how he was experimenting and how he found um, that it turned him completely and utterly bananas. So, if anything, this is a little bit like the uh, Claude Rains film. Now, I don't know if this one's got it, but... Yeah, there we are. You do get, with this one, a really nice, I don't know if you can see it there, totally awesome booklet. So this is The Invisible Man, Pip Donahue, and all the viewing notes and loads and loads of behind-the-scenes pictures in that one there. So in, in terms of bargains, that's really the best yet. Now, the final one um, was The Invisible Man, which uh, is an original title. And this tells the tale of a guy who's again working for the government and becomes invisible, but is tricked into it. And in season two, he realises there's an invisible man who's a villain. So he spends the majority of season two, which I've not got yet, um, trying to track down the main villain. Great stuff. Really up-to-date special effects. 
I think, though, I will say that this guy here, um, no, his name's escaped me now, uh, just seems to lack a lot of the, uh, perhaps the charm and originality of the um, kind of the first two series, the David McCollum and the Ben Murphy ones. But still, it's a good show. Uh, it lasted two seasons and again manages to take the character into new realms. It's a must-see. This is John Pertwee, signing off. <laughs>